الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين أما بعد. In these last few moments of Ramadan, there's possibly one day left and possibly two days. It could be that this was our last taraweeh and tomorrow night is our Isha prayer and our Eid is the next day. Tomorrow is the 29th. Or it could be that Allah has written for us one more day of Ramadan and on Wednesday, which seems more likely, will be the Eid. In any event, as Ramadan passes by, you know, many of us are thinking forward, we're thinking ahead, and it's a difficult discussion, it's a difficult thought process. Many of us are thinking what comes next. Already the masajid are dwindling, people are hardly here, and it looks like people are ready to move on, at least some of us. So this discussion, this thought process is very important. It's, it is a very difficult thought process. The last 28, 29 days, you know, for many of us were so incredible. We felt so close to Allah Azza wa Jal. We did things that perhaps we weren't accustomed to doing before. We were worshiping Allah, we were coming to the masajid, we're praying in the night, we're reading Quran, and maybe throughout the rest of the year we weren't pushing ourselves as much. Surely we weren't pushing ourselves that much. Ramadan is Ramadan after all. Um, the question now is, how do you maintain some of that consistency beyond Ramadan? That's the most important question now. Going forward, how do you maintain some of that good and the barakah and the blessing that you enjoy? Think about how you felt this month. We felt amazing. We felt great. We felt physically great, spiritually great. Our hearts were in a good position. So if that's a good thing and it's positive and you felt great, then part of us would want to continue some of that beyond Ramadan. So that's uh, something called consistency. So all of us need to be thinking about what can we do to maintain some of that uh, blessing, some of those blessings that we enjoyed in Ramadan. This issue is so serious actually. It's a hard discussion but it is so serious and it's something so heavy on the soul. You know, just think about, you know, where you were before Ramadan and where you are now. And then think about where you're going to be after Ramadan. Imagine you're back to where you started. Or even maybe negative. Imagine in a month or two from now, you're, you're not feeling close to Allah. You're not coming to the masajid. That's not a very nice thing. So these types, this, this type of discussion about maintaining consistency is, is very important and it's a very difficult discussion. And that is why one day Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, he came and saw the Prophet sallallahu and he noticed something different about the Prophet. And he said to him, Ya Rasulullah qad shibta. O Messenger of Allah, you're graying. Your hair is turning white. What is happening? It's happening sooner than expected. And then the Prophet sallallahu he said to him, qad shayyabatni hud wa akhawatuha. He said, what made my hair turn gray is Surah Hud and his sister Surah. Some of the Surahs that are accompanying or the same theme as Surah Hud. This is a Surah and a series of Surahs that made the Prophet so serious. And it's an expression that made his hair turn gray. Some early whites came upon his beard, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what is it about this Surah? So, People say different things. People say, well, it talks about the Day of Judgment, and the Day of Judgment is a very serious thing. People say um, it has the destruction of the previous nations in Surah Thud, for instance. Uh, perhaps that is the reason why. But there is one verse in Surah Thud that was the most difficult verse upon the Prophet wasallam. Ibn Abbas says, مَا نُزِلَ تَعَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي جَمِيعِ الْقُرْآنِ There was no single verse revealed upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the entire Qur'an كَانَتْ أَشَدُّ وَلَا أَشَقَّ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ That was not more difficult for him than this particular ayah. And that's ayah in Surah Hud. So there was one ayah in this surah that was the most difficult verse upon the Prophet Sallallahu So what was that verse? Imagine what that verse was. That verse is where Allah says, Istaqim 
كما أمرت ومن تاب معك ولا تتغو إنه بما تعملون بصير Allah commands the Prophet to have something called istiqama istiqama is that maintenance that steadfastness that consistency consistency I think is the best word in English Allah commanded the Prophet to have istiqama consistency and the ones who are with him as the companions and it's all of us who follow him istaqim kama umirt wa man taba mark have consistency as well as the, the way you have been commanded as well as everyone that is repenting along with you the ani the believers so the command for consistency and the arabic word for consistency is istiqama in the quran so that's the teaching of the quran we want to focus on today istiqama consistency so and that was so difficult upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he knew human beings we can't maintain the same level all the time we go up we go down we have different states some days you wake up you are full of energy some days you wake up and you just don't feel like doing anything some days you're physically tired some days you physically have energy some days you're emotionally tired some days you're emotional like full of energy some days you want to meet people some days you don't want to meet anyone so this is a human life our bodies go up and down there's fluctuation and our hearts fluctuate ma summi al qalbu illa min taqallubihi the the poet says that the qalb of the human being is only named because of the word qalb qallaba means to flip qallaba yuqallibu means to flip to change that's why like a revolu revolution in urdu is called inqilab same word something where the society flips upside down so the qalb of a human being it consistently changes it, or it continuously changes so the believer to maintain consistency is a very difficult thing but it's a very important thing it is the mission of the believer so we have to maintain that consistency in iman in tawakkul and all of these things yes there is going to be ups and downs but there should never be a point where you drop off the radar entirely so this command is very very important Allah says have istiqama o messenger of Allah the way you have been commanded so istiqama is a command of the Quran not only in this verse in many verses there is a verse um, where Allah azza wa jalla says inna alladhina qalu rabbuna Allah thumma istiqamu inna alladhina qalu rabbuna Allah thumma istiqamu those who say our lord is Allah and then they have istiqama So there's two qualities mentioned in this verse those who say my lord is allah meaning those who believe who bring faith who believe in allah but then allah adds to that not only that that's not enough the second thing you have to have is istiqama thumma istiqamu and then they have consistency on that belief you know you don't wake up one day oh today i feel like believing and another day i don't feel like believing or one day you're not sure about allah one day you're sure iman requires consistency Once you believe in Allah that's it you maintain it to the end so Allah says inna alladhina qalu rabbuna Allah thumma istaqamu tatanazzalu alayhim al malaikatu alla takhafu wa la tahzanu abshiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun it's a great station it's a high maqam this idea of iman and then maintaining that if you are able to achieve that Allah says in the Quran that tatanazzu alayhim al mal tatanazzalu alayhim al malaika the angels will descend upon that person and the angels will come congratulating that person congratulating that person saying to that person alla takhafu wa la tahzanu no khawf no huzn la khawf alayhim wa la hum yahzanun Allah says in another portion of the Quran khawf and huzn are the two emotions that that destroy us right the, the the worst emotions we can have one side is fear khawf the other side is huzn sadness khawf generally has to do with the future huzn has to do with the past khawf is you're thinking about something that can happen to you something about the future that inspires fear the unknown the things that are ahead of you that's khawf huzn sadness is about things that happened already to you people who passed away things that happened to you all the regrets that you have these are the two human emotions that 
that make up the bulk of our psychiatric, psychological problems. All psychological problems are either khawf or huzn. And khawf, you can say broadly, in psychology, what would that be? What kind of disease? Anxiety. Anxiety, that fear of the unknown, fear of the anxiety. And huzn is what? What's the opposite of anxiety? What's the other psychological disorder? Depression. Depression. Depression and anxiety are the two most common psychological disorders. And then there's varieties that are all related to these two root disorders. So anxiety is this fear of the future. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my kids? Oh, tomorrow I have a big thing. I'm so anxious about my interview or this or that. All future. Khawf. And huzn is the past. All the trauma that you have, everything you endured, and oh, so many things happened to me. I was thinking about the past and becoming sad. So people who have iman and istiqama, Allah promises them through the angels that you're going to be saved from this. No khawf and no khuzan. It doesn't mean 100% protection. There's still believers that fall into these. These are diseases. But this is some measure of protection. So these angels coming down and announcing to the believer that there's no khawf and no khuzan. And then, وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ Be happy. Congratulations on the Jannah that you were promised. Um, so some of the scholars say this happens at the time of death. These angels coming down at the time when the believer dies, the believer that had Iman and Istiqamah, then the angels will come and say this to them. Look, now there's nothing to worry about. Now you're safe. This is after death. And some scholars will say, no, this happens even in this life. Even in this life, the angels will come down and give you that Sakina, that tranquility, um, in your hearts when you have this quality of Iman and Istiqamah. So this is a very, very important quality. And that is why <coughs> in Sahih Muslim, we have Sufyan ibn Abdullah, a great companion. He came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, قُلْ لِي فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلًا لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا غَيْرَكَ And he, so he was a companion that came from far away. And he said to the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, give me one thing in Islam that I can hold on to and I will never have to ask anyone after you. Just one statement, one word, one piece of advice. I will never ask anyone after you. What did the Messenger tell him? He said, Qul, amantu billahi thumma staqim. He said, say, I believe in Allah and then have istiqamah. The same thing that's in the verse. The Prophet advised, the mo if, if you just want one piece of advice, the most important thing, and you want to stick to it until you die, the most important thing is this. Qul amantu billahi thumma staqim. Have iman in Allah, and then have istiqamah. Stick to that until you die. So this is very, very important. This kind of consistency, we really, really need this consistency. Istiqamah is a very, very important teaching of the Qur'an. So istiqama is consistency, is steadfastness, is persevering, is continuing to do the things that you do. And that's an important teaching at this juncture, as Ramadan is passing away in the last few hours of Ramadan. This is what we should be thinking about. Istiqama, how do we maintain some consistency going forward? Istiqama is not someone doing so much and then dropping off the radar and not doing anything after. Istiqama means to keep doing it steady. You know, keep doing what you're doing and maintaining that steadfastness, istiqama. So this is very, very important. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he one time defined istiqama in a, in a, in a khutbah. He said, um, he said, istiqama is to stick to the straight path and not to run around like the fox. So, لا تَرُغُ عَنْهُ رَغَوَانَ الثَّعَالِبِ uh, you maintain the straight path, but you're not like the fox that's running here, right, left, this way, that way. So the straight path, we, we, in Surah Al-Fatih, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ is, uh, is the same word. We ask Allah to guide us to that straight path. That's istiqama, the path of istiqama. The path that just goes in one direction. But going right, going left, thinking here and there, and just going in a deviated direction, that's the opposite of istiqama. So istiqamah is to maintain that. So all of us should be looking at our lives. Shaykh Hatim al-Hajj, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he put a very nice advice on his social media today. He said in these last few moments of Ramadan, 
you know, you should look at your life and maybe you can make uh, resolutions for the next year. Look at where you are now, what in your life you were able to achieve and what's good in your life and where you want to be next Ramadan. This is the most important month for the believer. And so this is a month we should be thinking about things like this. So he, he advised all of us to, in the last few moments, make your resolutions for next year. Do ihtisab. Look at your life. Look at what you did this month. Good. And what things could have been improved. What you didn't do so well. And write them down and think about it and think hard and think. make a plan for the next 11 months. So that where you're going to be in the next Ramadan. This is the time to think about it. Not a month before Ramadan next year in 2025. We're now, you know, Ramadan's almost here. Then we're making an announcement, brothers, we need to expand the parking lot and Ramadan's around the corner and so on and so forth. Then you start thinking about what am I going to do. This is the time to think about next Ramadan. So now everyone should be looking at your life and just make a plan. Look at what you did and make a plan. And it's also not over. There's still one or two days left. Make dua. It's still, you know, the, the end is still here. So it's how you end and not necessarily how you raise. So just the last thing I'll say, how do you maintain some consistency going forward? There are so many tips, so many advice, but um, maybe three things, and it's really no shortcut. The first thing is to just keep doing what you were doing. So try to keep doing what you were doing. Obviously, you cannot do the same thing as you did in Ramadan. Sheikh Islahi used to say, people say after Ramadan, everyone should still keep coming. We say, we give people advice, let's keep doing Qiyamul Layl, let's keep coming to the Masjid. He said, you're right, but the thing is, Ramadan is Ramadan. No matter what you do after Ramadan, it's not going to be the same as Ramadan. This is, Allah made it special, and there's nothing wrong with that. You're supposed to do more in Ramadan, so don't be guilty that I'm not doing what I did in Ramadan. That's natural. But at the same time, try to keep doing what you're doing. If well, you know, if you're reciting Qur'an and finish Qur'an in Ramadan, maybe you can do a khatma of the Qur'an in the next 11 months. Maybe if you can't maintain it in the same schedule as Ramadan, which is very difficult, okay, read a little bit every day and maybe by next Ramadan you can finish the Qur'an at least once in the 11 months, and that's not hard. Um, coming to the Masajid, if you were coming five times a day, try to maintain that. But if you can, at least try to do more than you were doing before. So, the first advice and consistently, just keep doing it. You just have to work hard. There's no shortcut. There's no magic trick I can give you. There's nothing I can tell you, do this. And you just have to push yourself and keep doing it like you were doing in Ramadan. Like we pushed ourselves, we were tired, but we just got up and we did it. So keep doing that beyond Ramadan. And number two, make dua. Making dua is very, very important. You know, that's a secret for the believer. We always ask Allah Azza wa for help. Um, one of the wives of the Prophet Umm Salama was asked, "Ma kana akthar du'a in Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ida kana indaki." Someone asked Umm Salama, and asked, "When the Prophet was in your house, in mean his house, but when he was with you, what did the what was the most frequent du'a that you heard him make, sallallahu alaihi wasallam?" She said, "The most frequent du'a I heard from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was, Ya muqallib al qulub." Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O fluctuator of the hearts, keep my heart firm on your deen. Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. This is a dua for istiqama, consistency. The Prophet is recognizing the heart fluctuates. So he's asking Allah who created the hearts, who's the fluctuator of the hearts. And he was making dua, oh Allah, make me firm, keep me straight, keep me steadfast, maintain me on your deen. So this is very, very important. Keep making dua. There's so many duas in the Quran about istiqama. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da id hadaytana. Wahabilana min ladunka rah. What does that mean? Rabbana la tuzig. Tuzig is the opposite of istiqama. Istiqama is to keep going straight. Tuzig means to deviate. So this dua in the Quran, Rabbana, O our Lord, do not make our hearts deviate after you have guided them. We found your way. We have been guided, we found the guidance. Do not let our hearts deviate. Let's maintain that guidance. So dua is very important. So number one was keep pushing yourself to do what you were doing. Number two, keep making dua to Allah for istiqama. Even ihdin as-sirat al-mustaqim is a dua for istiqama. And number three, the last thing what will help you is reciting Quran. 
Quran will show you the way. Quran will, if you keep reciting Quran with meaning and reflection, surely it will help. That's a great means and a tool for istiqamah. That's why Allah says about Quran, in huwa illa dhikrun lil alameen, liman sha'a minkum an yastaqeem. Allah says this is a dhikr for the entire universe, for those who want to have istiqamah. Liman sha'a minkum an yastaqeem. So this Quran is for the people who want istiqamah in their life. So keep reciting the Quran, it will show you the way, it will guide you, it will tell you what to do, it will push you, it will remind you to never give up your relationship with the Quran. May Allah give us steadfastness, may Allah give us istiqama, may Allah give us the tawfiq to finish Ramadan strong and to continue maintaining some of that practice that we had in Ramadan, even if it's not the entire thing. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. With that, I, with the permission of Tanwi, I think this will be the final session. Tomorrow, we're not sure is Ramadan or not. It may be that we don't have Tarawih, so we won't have a lecture. And if we do, then inshallah, um, maybe we can take a break um, and I can visit another community tomorrow, inshallah. So with that, it was a pleasure serving you all and may Allah accept from me and from all of you and all your hard work in this late hour. May Allah forgive our Mawlana Yusuf Islahi, rahimahullah, for all the work he did. All this should be placed on his skills. May Allah do that. And with that, if there are any final questions, until next year. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yeah, that's a, scholars say that's a great sign of acceptance that when, when, you, when you're in a better position than before, and you find yourself in a better position, you find yourself continuing to do certain things that you weren't doing before. So that's excellent. Ramadan is a training program, and if you find yourself much better than before, that's the purpose of Ramadan. That means Allah favored you with acceptance, and inshallah. Sheikh Islahi, I was thinking a lot about him today and subhanAllah, there's, I realized today in, like with Ramadan closing that the life that he lived, you know, when people like that leave, they leave a void, no one can fill that. It's just like Ramadan goes, you will never have Ramadan again. Like beyond Ramadan, it's Shawwal, everything you can do in Shawwal is not going to be like Ramadan. So same thing like with, with his life, I, I'm just, I was just thinking. You know, like what he used to do, like his life was a life of istiqamah. Like what he did, he did it, like he kept doing it until the end of his life. The last 50 years, he was visiting so many communities. He was visiting so many masajid. He was having programs for sisters in the masjid. He never gave that up on Wednesdays, I think, after the whole time. He went to various masajid. He never gave that up. He would go to those same masjid year after year. He would go to cities I never heard of. He used to go to like a city, I was thinking today, a city called Mechanicsburg in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Have you heard of Mechanicsburg? That's a small town in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania, almost four hours, three, four hours from here. And he used to, because I used to ask him, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to Mechanicsburg. I was like, I never even heard of that. Every year he would go there, it's a small little masjid, nobody, almost hardly anybody there. But he maintained all of them. I was thinking, now that he's gone, these poor sisters don't have anybody. These masajid lost the link, and um, how many masajid in New Jersey uh, and New York he would visit every single year to look forward to seeing him. That's a void that can never be filled. No one can fill that void. And that's kind of how Ramadan is. Ramadan is, you know, it's meant to be special, and when it leaves, you're supposed to miss it. Nothing can replace Ramadan. That's just that's something I was thinking about today. You know, just I saw some of the sisters and I felt really bad. And like, you know, they had, they had a scholar that sat with them um, continuously and he was someone who cared about the youth and the sisters. He made special time for them. And often in our communities, we don't, we don't have that. They're behind walls and they're not part of the community in a meaningful way. Not talking about here, I'm just talking in general. And most massages are like that. Um, 
Well, subhanAllah, he was an incredible person, left an incredible legacy, and so many lessons from his life, how he lived. He lived a life of istiqam, surely. May Allah forgive him and raise his ranks.